Hi, this is Mesh Rundown. If you enjoy movie reviews, shorts, and trailer reactions, you're in the right place. If you want to subscribe and hit the like button down below. Today we're reviewing number 76 on our top 100, Some Like It Hot from 1959. Some Like It Hot is a 1959 romantic comedy film directed by Billy Wilder, starring Marilyn Monroe as Sugar, Tony Curtis as Joe, and Jack Lemmon as Jerry. Joe and Jerry are on the run after witnessing a mob hit. The two musicians disguise themselves as women in an all-female band in order to evade capture by the mobsters. Of course, calamity ensues when they meet Sugar. The Good What I found very interesting about this movie, especially for the time period that it came out in, was the misogynistic undertones of the male gaze. I found it very fascinating that they actually switched roles. Yes. Having the men dressed as women actually living through, you know, the lived experiences of women, of being harassed sexually, <laughs> of being objectified, of the asses being pinched and slapped, yes. of unwanted advances that are like way too strong, bordering on sexual assault, and sometimes actual sexual assault, of course. Even with Tony Curtis and the bellboy, the bellboy did not take no for an answer at all throughout the whole movie. And he did not want those advances. No. And I think it's nice to actually have men see how it feels to be a woman and be on the receiving end, especially back then. Because yeah. now I think we talk about it a lot more. It still happens, but we talk about it. I think back then it was even less spoken of. Yeah. So I, I really enjoyed that aspect. But it's the same aspect that kind of made me not enjoy the movie. Because sometimes the misogyny went so far and I was cringing. But it's actually things that happen in real life, so I know it was more of a commentary, but I think it went to like the over silly for me. And I also don't think uh, Joe, Tony Curtis's character, kind of learned his lesson until very late in the movie, because even though he was experiencing this, he still was willing to lie and stuff to get with sugar. Yeah. And that was not great of him. <laughs> but he did learn at the end, because... He gave away everything for her when he ran away. Yeah. So he learned his lesson, I guess. It just took him a while. I think it's difficult for guys to realize how disturbing it is to be constantly harassed like that. Because some guys say, no, some women enjoy the extra attention. And it's like, maybe some women do, but most don't. Yeah. Most women like, rather don't do that. Yeah. But yeah, it took, it took him a while. Especially because he was like the player. I don't know why, well, we know why he likes Sugar so much, but I think later on he gets to know her as a person because he acts as, what's her name? Jo was it Josephine? What? Josephine. Yeah. Yes. Acts as Josephine, who actually becomes a friend and actually gets to know her beyond her physicality. Yes. Because with Marilyn Monroe, that's the whole point of this movie is her physicality. Even in the introduction where she's walking, they're always looking at her ass and her legs and, you know, yes. not much else because she really portrays that, like, that's he bombshell blonde yeah but you know he gets to know her and i feel like it towards the end he actually does maybe care about her beyond her physicalities yes which is, i enjoyed a lot so it was good commentary i think just in general the script was very fun as well there was a lot of humor throughout it i was laughing a lot it was a very good delivery from all the actors everybody nailed their roles like i was very happy with the movie in general and i think the three actors really had good chemistry because they played off of each other quite a lot. And, you know, Marilyn Monroe, at least she looked like she was having fun. Yes. I was aware of Marilyn Monroe. I know Tony Curtis. I like Tony Curtis. Jack Lemmon. I don't know if I had seen a movie with Jack Lemmon in it. And he's brilliant. Like, so funny. I thoroughly enjoyed all three of them. Is Jack Lemmon the one who got enamored by the... <laughs> Captain, yes. As a captain. Yes, And he definitely. had to kind of remind himself that, you know, I'm a man. I'm a man. <laughs> yes. But I think, like, um, it's easy for someone to get enamored because, you know, if you're being treated well and someone's giving you attention and time and really listening to you, it's easy to feel like, hey, I kind of like this person because they seem to be trying and caring. Yes. And that reminds me of my favorite scene, I think, in the movie, is where... You see uh, Tony Curtis and Mel Marilyn Monroe's not juxtaposed with Jack Lemmon's not, and he's not enjoying the dance and that, and he's yeah, almost 
begrudgingly being there and they're having such a good romantic evening and like you keep splitting between those two scenes and it's so funny watching his reactions and their reactions and at the end of the night Jack Lemmon is actually enamored enamored as well <laughs> so the captain does a really good job at wooing his prospective partners yes because <laughs> he even gets the reluctant Daphne to like him it was great thinking about that the end scene yeah that last line of the movie is just perfect. It's I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed the, everything. I didn't expect the last line, so I laughed. Yes. <laughs> and, you know, what? it's really good pacing throughout the whole movie. It's not like... It's a bit frantic at times, but it's not completely frantic the whole time. It does have a good flow. It's a good watch. I think the franticness was proportionate to the circumstance they were in because it was a life and death situation. Yeah. So like you said, it wasn't too much, but it was appropriate for the movie. And then, obviously, we can't really talk about this very much without just mentioning the Hayes Code. Yes. And how this movie really seemed to not give a shit about the Hayes Code because they didn't end up getting uh, the seal of approval. No. Because, obviously, like there was so much kissing and... Uh, it was raunchy. It was raunchy. Um, homosexuality was alluded to. Yeah. <laughs> at least, you know. So there were a lot of weird pieces that for back in the day was weird. But now it's like normal viewing. Yeah, this was fun. But back then it was like a big no-no. And they decided to release the movie, you know, even without the stamp. And they didn't change anything because a lot of movies in the day would have changed parts of the script or parts of the movie scenes in order to fit in with the Hayes Code. And they decided, no, we're not going to. And yet they were still a really big hit, despite the fact that they said, nah. And it's these kind of movies that allow society to transition into and transcend, probably, into a more open space where people can be who they are, because that's a big theme at the end of the movie. Yes. It's being who you are and being accepted for who you are. No one's perfect. And portraying different people so that we actually get to acknowledge that, you know, everyone's not this homogenous blob <laughs> of sameness. Well, I think that's a bit redundant, but you know what I mean. Yes. That takes us to the bad. And for me, it's just not my type of movie. There was like some funny pieces where I enjoyed, but a lot of it, like I said earlier, was just over the top for me and it was just too much. Overall, I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was a good movie, good comedy. I see the significance of it. And it's not just one of those movies where, oh, I see the significance. Didn't enjoy it, but I saw the significance. This one, saw the significance, and it was good. I enjoyed it more than some of the other significant movies on the list, because sometimes I feel like the list gets confused with what's a good movie and what's a significant movie, and to me it's not the same thing. Yeah. Um, this was a good movie for the type of movie it is. I know it's just not my type of movie, but I still did watch most of it, and I laughed, so it was fine. Yeah. So that leaves me... Giving it a 6. I'm going to give it a 7. So that leaves it with a 6.5, which is pretty good. Yeah. Especially considering it's really not my wheelhouse. <laughs> so I really enjoyed Jack Lemmon's performance. Let me know in the comments down below what's his best movie. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye.